Hi guys, it's Matt Hancocks here and welcome to uh, another instalment of our video series and um, what we're talking about today is confusing your calories so we're going to be talking about this next stage uh, in your program where you're going to be carbohydrate cycling and also introducing some other exercise programs that are really going to ramp up your metabolism and ramp up your fat, store, uh, fat burning. So what we're going to do briefly is quickly have a review of last video and then we'll get into it. So if you remember um, last video we did cellular fluid and metabolism and what I um, spoke about was that cellular fluid is the most important constitute in cellular health yeah because it's it's um, it's the fluids that the cells actually swim in. Leading cell biologist and epi epigenetic researcher Bruce Lipton he suggested that less than 10% of cancers are linked to genes and 98% of all disease is due to the environment. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to alkalize our system by um, drinking plenty of clean water, filtered water, coming away from tap water which is just full of chemicals and fluoride and chlorine. Um, and also we introduce, it's a good idea to introduce alkalizing salts like sodium bicarbonate, um, lemon, and also green drinks, especially chlorophyll, are particularly good at alkalizing the system. So that's kind of what you know. What we want to do is increase the increase the alkalicity, increase the um, the health of the fluid that the cells are swimming in, and that in turn increases the uh, the transport of oxygen. It will basically create a healthy system, which will then mean that you, your bodies will release fat. Okay. Um, the cells will release fat, sorry, so you know your bodies become nice and lean. We also talked about metabolism. So um, metabolism, we were talking about the thyroid being the master and driver um, of metabolism. So the f obviously taking fluoride and chlorine and acidic foods out of our diets are going to help the function of the thyroid. Um, Remember, metabolism has a critical role in the body for the reduction of body fat. It goes without saying that if we speed up metabolism, we're going to increase our calorific spend on a day-to-day -day basis. So the best way to reduce body fat is by increasing your resting metabolic rate, how many calories you burn to stay alive. So this is really, really important because we, you know, we're talking about boosting metabolism, which effectively is meaning you're going to lose weight. So we need to improve the function of your thyroid, thyroid as it's the master and driver of metabolism and that comes down to eliminating those um, things we've just discussed but also adding in iodine, in iodine drops or kelp and hops, um, seaweed and also sort of fish um, is really good for iodine and then we've got um, selenium which you can get from again fish and Brazil nuts but um, it's, a, it's a very good mineral to include with vitamin E which then boosts the antioxidants um, so it's got great anti-aging anti properties so it's a really really good mineral for anti-aging and also improving the health of your cells. So that's kind of what we discussed and um, also mentioned that it would be a great um, it would be great to introduce magnesium into your diet if you if you haven't already um, especially the magnesium calcium formula because that means that your body will absorb them much much more effectively because magnesium is used in over 300 biochemical reactions in the body so it's a great way of boosting metabolism and boosting the weight loss so if you um, are not taking any key key system products at the moment then I advise you to go into boosting your metabolism by taking perhaps the selenium and the magnesium. Um, if you are taking a key system product then it's something that you want to consider at a later stage probably because you don't want to be walking down the street rattling so I appreciate we've given you a few ideas now for how to supplement your health it's really just a case of which one's working for you if you feel that you know you're really lacking energy and you're really finding it hard for to get up and go then you then it might be that your thyroid just and, and just needs a bit of a kick start so you may need to find, may need to give it the foods that it needs in the form of pumpkin seeds fish brazil nuts broccoli um, loads of greens chlorophyll and then um, 
you know, maybe these minerals, iodine, selenium, and magnesium could, uh, could help. Okay, great. So moving on to today then, we're talking about carbohydrate cycling. And basically when we're talking about carbohydrate cycling, cycling we're doing it because we want to improve the function of your leptin hormone. Now, as you know, every, every time um, on these videos I'm talking about hormones, everything you do um, in return, you know, basically for health and for losing weight, um, it's all to do with controlling your hormones. Now, thyroid is the master of your and um, controller of your metabolism, but in my opinion, and, and in my opinion, leptin is of equal importance and probably what we call the commander and the chief of all other hormones. Okay. Now, the if you have something called leptin resistance, this essentially means that the receptors in your body won't be responding to the leptin in your blood. And this in turn can result in all of your other hormones being out of sync. In my experience, it's simply not possible to have optimal hormone levels without having the correct levels of leptin and or having receptors that are responsive to leptin. So you may be asking, oh, what the hell is leptin? Okay, well, basically leptin is stored within all of our adipose tissue, yeah, so our fat cells, um, and it communicates with the brain. So for example, eating a large meal increases the amount of leptin and this incre increase is detected by the brain and leads to this feeling of kind of you know satisfaction and fullness when we eat. Um, this leads us obviously to then stop eating further but the problem is right is if you don't have sufficient levels of leptin or if the brain cannot detect the leptin we do have we will simply feel the need to keep on munching all right and the problem with that can, hurt, can then obviously occurs with overeating um, and it might start to develop leptin resistance. So the leptin resistance will reduce the brain's ability to detect the leptin even further resulting in this vicious cycle that you see before you um, of overeating. So we have all this fat in our stomach but because of our leptin receptors aren't telling our brains that you know we've eaten our brain thinks that we're starving and motivates us to eat more. So kind of think of it, uh, hopefully that makes sense, but I'm just going to just sort of talk, talk to you a little bit more about it um, and try and give you an example that should make the penny drop if it hasn't already. Basically, think of a fuel gauge, yeah? So imagine you're putting fuel into your car and the gauge will only allow you to fill the tank and then it will cut off, yes, it cuts off the flow of fuel. And this makes sure that you don't overfill. Now, leptin works in a similar way. So when you've taken enough uh, fuel or food on board, it cuts the flow of food um, off by making you feel full. And in those of us with leptin resistance, this shut-off mechanism doesn't work. And we pretty much feel hungry all of the time. And therefore, you know, we, we overeat and we put, put weight on. Okay? So this is what, um, one, of the, one of the ways you can really kind of get to grips with leptin um, is by, we're going to do carb cycling. I think it's a great way, it's a very powerful tool for weight loss because um, it combines the benefits of low carb diets okay, with periodic diets of carb loading and it is very, very, very effective. So... We know that low carb diets work short term, okay, for fat loss, but you know the problems with it are that you get complete fatigue, brain fog, loss of training performance, and obviously you get inevitable carb and sugar cravings, okay? So you really can you, you can only do most people will do low fat diets for a certain amount of time and then you know they, they're normally yo yo diet because they just can't resist it anymore and they go for sugar cravings. What we need to do is curb the cravings by eating really good nutritious food like we've been talking about throughout this journey so far and you know come up with a sort of low carb diet plan with periodic days of then carb loading. So we've been doing what we call moderate carb at the moment uh, all the way through this plan which is 40% of complex carbs, 30% um, of uh, proteins and 30% good fats and what we need to do is that carb loading will be 50% carbs, moderate carb will be the continue on the 40% and 
and then low carb will be no carb at all, just vegetables. Um, so starchy, starchy carbs in the form of vegetables. Um, now, for most people, carb cycling can get very complex and confusing. Um, but what I've done is I've constructed a really simple plan here, so that you'll be able to go, you know, take get all the weight loss advantages carb cycling can offer in a nice, easy to follow step by step system. I think, anyway. Um, the easiest way I found to, to set this up is to basically just do a non-linear diet um, that runs over a seven day a week. So we'll go through that in a second. And I, first of all, I just want to go through you know, what we need to look out for when we're talking about carb cycling and the results that we want to get. Okay. Now, one of my favorite sayings of all okay, when it comes to kind of getting in shape is that abs are made in the kitchen, not in the gym. And this basically means that 80-90% of the results you're going to get from any program, um, including all the Elevate programs that we've got, are going to be um, from properly constructed nutrition and the ability for you to adhere to those meal plans. So the carb cycling, you've, it's, it's very well structured, but you've got to stick to it, you've got to adhere to it um, in order for it to work. Now your success is going to be dependent on three primary pillars okay real food obviously so we're talking about the food that we've been eating so far that is going to continue um, and nutrient timing real food and nutrient combinations real food and nutrient portion control so always eating good food but then we need to look at food timing combinations and portion control so what we're going to do uh, remember we want to be having whenever possible natural organic food instead of convenient processed products first and foremost okay now um, if we look at food timing so we'll go for food timing first of all and this this can be um, we look at this basically on the times that you're eating the uh, carbohydrates okay so the, car, the, the times that you're going to eat your carbohydrates. So basically, you're going to be eating your meals every three and a half to four hours, no more, um, no less than that. Um, because if you eat your meals too close together, your blood sugar will be elevated throughout the day, which means that your body uh, will be in more of a kind of fat storing environment. So um, that's what we're going to be doing on this plan. Because if you eat your, unless you're doing kind of intermittent fasting, which is a fast, sort of more structured, superior program, um, you know, you won't. You, if you eat your meals too far apart, you could enter into a catabolic or muscle wasting state, which is what we don't want. The only way you can avoid that is by intermittent fasting. As I say, that's a little bit more in depth, and it's not what we're going to be talking about now. We're just going to stick to carb cycling for now. Okay. So you're gonna eat within one hour of waking up. This is really important and that meal has high protein in it. So this will help you take advantage of the higher metabolic rate and better insulin sensitivity um, first thing, yeah? Um, it will ensure your in insulin sensitivity is high so the carbs will be utilized for energy repair growth and rather than spilling over because we don't want to spill over. Remember the, the fuel pump and the gauge? If it didn't click off, it would just spill over and you don't want that to happen, okay? You're going to always eat uh, one and a half to two hours before a workout and within 20 to 60 minutes after a workout. That's really, really important. Uh, one and a half to two hours before a workout will give your body enough time to partially digest your food, provide energy for exercise and give your muscles um, a steady stream of amino acids. While at the same time putting you in a slightly fasted state to maximize the release of more hormones that burn fat during your workout. Yeah? Um, 20 to 60 minutes after your workout will provide nutrients with a magic window. This is where muscles are like kind of like a wet sponge, right? Um, and so it's been wrung out dry and they literally want to suck up all your nutrients again. So this is a really, really good time to, to whack the carbs and the, and the proteins in. So moving on to the food combinations, um, you never want to eat carbohydrate by itself, which kind of goes without saying. We've been that's the same thing as what we've had all along. 
because they will spike your blood sugar, yeah? Raise that insulin and obviously carry over to your fat storing gene, um, fat storing environment. You always um, need to make sure you've got a high quality protein with every single meal. So this will keep your body in a consistent anabolic or muscle preserving state, yeah? So protein provides muscle tissue uh, with a steady stream of amino acids to help assist muscle growth. Now we're not trying to turn you into Arnold Schwarzenegger, we're just trying to make sure that you can keep your lean tissue which will boost your metabolism and burn more fat. Simple as that. Um, it will help keep your blood sugars more stable throughout the day and also give you more, more energy. Yeah. The um, the thermic effect of protein will obviously help prevent metabolic slowdown, burns more calories, um, and also um, always limit fat intake when eating starches or fruits. So you want to just watch your fat intake when you're having the um, the high cut on the high carb days, because that's when you're going to be having your starches. All right. So. By keeping fat intake lower in meals that contain starches, um, you will avoid insulin and fatty acid being present together in the bloodstream. Insulin and fat equals potential fat storage, which is obviously not great. Okay? A good rule of thumb is anytime you are on a high carb day, try and keep fat at 10 grams or lower. Okay? So anytime you are on a high carb day, try and keep fat at 10 grams or lower. Obviously I've put together some recipes in your book but going forward, you know, it's just you need to know these kind of rules of thumb so you can continue. If you wanted to continue carb cycling, you want to bring carb cycling back in one time and do some, do have some different diets, different recipes. Then you know these are things you want to take on board. You need to keep fat intake to a minimum before and after workouts, okay? Because they what they tend to do is they slow digestion and keep insulin stable. So. This is a great benefit during other time of the days, but pre and post workout at the only two times of days when we really want to speed up your absorption and uh, intentionally spike insulin. So this will help force more nutrients into muscle tissue because insulin is a storage hormone, remember. All right? Always combine proteins and carbs together before and after your workout. And obviously, you know, have 20, 20 to 60 minute window. That's when you want to be having both together. So... Looking at um, portion control, portion control, so how much to eat basically. Now, from a health perspective, the most important shift that you know you can make is to start eating the correct foods, which is what we've always you know been talking about. And we haven't really been talking about calorie controlling or calorie restricting, but at this moment in time when we're talking about carb cycling, I think it's quite important for uh, in order for us to progress is to just have a quick look at um, you know calculating our calorie needs so um, it's a good idea to kind of do the calculation so you know what your body needs on a, on a daily basis and this is simple you just literally write down how much you weigh in pounds what your fat percentage is which will then you'll be able, you'll be able to uh, calculate your lean body mass from your lean body mass you just times um, the, the the number of calories by the by the per percentage over there. So, for example, if I weigh 100, uh, 181 pounds and my body fat is 11 percent, therefore my weight is 19.9 pounds. Okay, because 181 times um, the 11 percent, and then my lean body mass is 161.1. So just that's just 181 minus the 19.9 pounds to give me my lean body mass. Okay? Awesome, so do that quick calculation and you can calculate your um, calorie intake, so what your body requires. Um, so whatever body fat percentage you are, you look across, you times the number of calories by your lean body mass. So if my lean body mass was 161, and my um, my body fat percentage is 11, so my current body fat is in the top one there. So I just need to multiply my lean body mass by 17 kilocalories, and that will um, that will calculate my daily.
calorific intake. Okay, excellent. So this is a good thing to uh, just to give you an idea of what what the calories you should be you know you should be consuming at this moment in time, um, so that we 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 get things absolutely spot on. And although I'm recommending that you weigh in your food, you know, and being probably a little bit anal at this stage, I don't want you to do it all the time. I literally just want you to do it for um, perhaps this first week, just to get a really good idea of what what you want to be doing. Okay. It's not realistic for the long haul, okay? I don't want you weighing and measuring all the time. It really just to, to make sure you really understand the amount of food you should be eating to get a good idea of um, your portion control. Um, if later on, after you've done that, a really good, you can actually use your hands as a good indicator, okay? So, um, you know, I know it sounds a little bit weird, but you can monitor your food intake consistently um, and maintain a fat burn environment around the clock just by your, using your hands for measure. Basically your fist, your palm and your thumbs are directly related to how many calories and grams you should be consuming on a daily basis. So here's how it works. Basically protein is the, um, you should have a pro protein should be the same size uh, of the palm of your hand. An acceptable range is about 15 to 25 grams per serving for women and 20 to 40 grams for men. If you're not consistently exercises, these amounts will be lower, of course. Now, carbohydrates, if you clench your fist together, um, carbohydrates are about the size of your fist. All right? An acceptable range should be 25 to 50 grams per serving, and post-workout should be more toward 35 to 40 for women and 45 to 50 for men. So just that a little bit more post-workout because you want to um, get the protein straight into your muscles and carbohydrates helps with that, of course. And fats really are just the size of the end of your two thumbs, okay? Carbs and proteins only yield four calories per gram whilst fat yields nine. So this indicates that you have to monitor fat intake uh, and use smaller portion sizes for fats. So 10 to 12 nuts, not half the jar, all right? That's really, really important. We, we want to increase our good fats for sure, um, but we just got to make sure that we're not, just because it's healthy, that we're not uh, going overboard. So acceptable ranges should be about 15 to 30 grams per serving, which is about one to two tea t uh, tablespoons. Yeah. Now these are just estimates, uh, hormone, hormones, exercise intensity, sleep, recovery, supplementation. They all help affect overall results as it relates to burning fat and or gaining muscle. But it's just a good... I am indicator for you to, to to keep track of what you should be eating and your portion controls. Okay, so here's a great uh, a sort of seven day uh, example for you on what you're going to be doing. So um, this for me has been the easiest way f for you to set up. So it's like a, a seven day week, right, which is non-linear. So therefore, on a Monday you'll go for high carbs and um, your weight training. So. For the women, you're going to be doing density training. For the men, you're going to be doing strength training. But uh, we'll go through some examples of this at the end. But in your books, you have density um, for women and, and strength for men. In the evening of that uh, high carb day, I'd also recommend a metabolic um, metabolic hit, which is also in, in your programming. On Tuesday, we go for low carb, and then we go for a cardio hit. So we're kind of making use of the fact that we've got that drop in, in calories and then we'll go for a cardio hit. Uh, also because low carb days you, you do have less energy than you do on a high carb day for obvious reasons and therefore um, you want to stick to cardio rather than hitting the weights. And then on Wednesday it's moderate carb and metabolic conditioning which is what you've been doing up until this point anyway. And you just cycle that round again. Okay. So carb cycling is a fantastic way to have a variety in your diet while maximizing your fat loss efforts. You know, it's no longer um, a plan exclusively for muscular de definition, you know, often with bodybuilders. Um, we've used this a, a lot and, you know, it really, really does work. It's, um, it's phenomenal, um, basically. So important foods to remember is fresh vegetables, yeah? You're going to be eating tons and tons of veg because low carb day vegetables are all you eat. Um, then with a bit of protein with it, you don't have any fruit. You can bring some fruits back in on moderate, 
but no starchy carbs and then on high carb you bring fruits all fruits and starchy carbs in so that's how you cycle it cycle it around so let's just go in that into a little bit more detail then so low carb you want to be having about 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per pound of lean body mass you literally just want to be eating um, your carbohydrates in the form of vegetables only yeah so a sample meal will be spinach and watercress salad with balsamic vinegar olive oil dressing you whack in some tomatoes and cucumbers slice of grilled uh, chicken and sprinkle of nuts and seeds and you're done it's as easy as that all right um, there obviously we've got the meals for uh, we've got it all laid out for you but that just gives you an idea of how easy it is to do a low carb meal Moderate carb then is basically what you've been eating so far, apart from the, you want to be watching the fruits. So the only fruits allowed are those on here. You'll notice there's no bananas on there um, because they're, they're far too high in sugar um, for the moderate carb day, but everything else is, is pretty good. Um, we've added a few extra uh, vegetables in there and we've also added in legumes like kidney beans and chickpeas and uh, butter beans, etc. and lentils. So your moderate carbs are um, pretty much what you've been doing so far, apart from we just need a few, um, need to watch for a few of the fruits. And then on a high carb day, um, you know, we've got a 50, 30, 20 split. So um, you, your carbs have gone up and your fats have gone down, basically. Um, we've added in the fruits now and we've added in kind of your starchy carbohydrates, so your sweet potato, oat cakes, quinoa, rice, um, pasta, manuka honey. So we've added in a few a few bits and pieces. What you'll notice is it's all still clean. So even though it's a high carb day, it's all still clean food. There's no kind there's no kind of nasty food in there at all. This will mean that your fat loss progress will continue. So you can even have porridge for breakfast, a sandwich for lunch. Um, add rice or pasta with your chili for dinner. So this is kind of, um, it's, it feels like a bit of a cheat day, um, but it's all really, really healthy. The only thing with it is just make sure that you do train those two times and you follow that high carb with a low carb day. It's essential that you get you, the, the right training with um, the right day of nutrition. So um, we've got the nutrition plan there that you're gonna just repeat uh, uh, over the, the next few weeks. Um, so you've got high, low, moderate, high, low, moderate, and then low, and you just repeat that through. It's very, very important that, um, you know, on that high carb day that you do the right training to match the nutrition that you're having, okay? So if we look briefly at um, the program templates here, the, the men on the program, what you'll do when you're doing high carb is you'll do um, a strength density um, a strength dynamic session in the morning and then you'll do a metabolic um, metabolic hit session of the evening so you get a double metabolic effect um, effect okay um, you, you're simply just going through um, the strength exercises here and you do as many sets as it takes to get the reps done so you know set one you might do you might manage to get 12 reps out, then set two, you might have only got 10, and then that leaves you eight for, the, for your third set. So you go through, as, you do as many as you can, write it in set one, move on to the next exercise, write it in set one, move on to the next exercise, write it in set one, and then go back to A1 again, and do as many reps as you can, until you've done all the reps. Once you've done all the reps of all three, A1, A2, A3, you move on to your dynamic interrupt, you do 20 inch worms and 20 squat jumps. All these exercises are on videos for you so you, you know exactly what to do. Once you've done that, you work, go to workout set B and you go through it in exactly the same fashion as you've just done, okay? The women will do more of a density circuit. So this one, you do, um, you go on timing. So use your music that you already have and you will go either 40, 20 or 45, 15 and you do as many reps as you can with a certain weight for the first exercise then um, you go on to A2 then you go on to A3 then you do the whole lot again so you do A1, A2 and A3 again but you put the weight up you want to be putting the weight up about 
um, for your second set. Okay, you then you move on to B1. So you'll do two sets of, of A, two sets of B, two sets of C, um, increasing the weight on your second set. Once you've done those, you move on and you do some cardio hits at the end. You've got some hit training here. This is for your um, for your carb, high carb um, evening session. All right. Now you can do it in the morning and do and do it the other way around if you've got more time. Generally, these are going to take less time than your actual program. So as long as one of them's done in the morning, one of them's done in the evening, it doesn't really matter. I just thought that you know really most people are going to have a less less time in the evening, so it's just nice to get a quick one out of the way. Okay. So they, there's your metabolic hits down the bottom there. Your cardio hits are what you do on the Tuesday and the Friday, and they go with your low carb days. Okay. There's an uh, intensity gorge at the top. You've got to make sure that you do it at the intensity that it says. So for instance, when you're running hard at intensity four to five, that means high or as hard as you can. So it's very very hard. You, it's not, you know, being able to jog along and have a chat. All right, so it's important that you get the intensities right, um, and it's important that those cardio days are done on low, and these metabolic hits are done on your high carb days, and they go with your strength or your density sessions. All right, your last training session is your metabolic, all right, and this is on a Wednesday and a Saturday, and we'll go with your moderate carb days. So that's basically what you've been doing um, all along, and then you just do a little bit of a metabolic hit at the end. So I just want to uh, let's go back. Um, thank you for your time today, and that concludes our confusing calories session. If you need to, um, if you don't understand it, want a little bit of help, um, then please just write into the forum. Um, just put, type into the forum, and we'll and we'll answer your questions straight away. But I'm hoping that the manuals make sense to you. Um, I'm hoping that that short video has just helped clarify everything. I wish you luck on this next stage of your um, of your journey. You really are going to start seeing results now. So make sure you take your measurements, make sure you take your photos, and I look forward to hearing all about it. Thanks guys. See ya. Bye.